Now, the mechanisms that uh, sigma-1 agonism provides are very relevant beyond Huntington disease. For example, in ALS, loss of function of sigma-1 through mutations in humans causes ALS. And this genotype-phenotype correlation, if you have a mutation in the sigma-1 receptor that is a null allele that cut, cuts the whole protein out, you get a very severe juvenile form of ALS. Furthermore, if you have a missense mutation that just causes a loss of function of the protein but mild, you get adult onset ALS. So we know that sigma-1 is crucial. Uh, for function and can lead to ALS if it's less functioning. At the same time, we know that sigma-1 agonism in in vivo clinical, preclinical models has shown improvement in Parkinson's disease, in Alzheimer's disease, in ALS as well, and then in numerous neurodevelopmental conditions such as Wolfram syndrome, fragile X syndrome, Rett syndrome, uh, a vanishing white matter disease. These are all because the brain has only a few ways it can respond to different forms of injury. The end result is these pathways are activated, then that cause neuronal loss, and sigma-1 agonism can provide approaches to reversing the toxic effects of these pathways and providing neuroprotection. And so clearly, a safe oral drug, useful in Huntington disease, with a, will have broad application beyond Huntington disease itself. The earlier you treat theoretically, the better, because you cannot resurrect dead neurons, but however you want to be, maintain neurons that are likely to die, already showing some neuronal injury. And therefore, uh, in the end, we want to go not from treatment of disease, but rather to prevention of disease in high-risk individuals. These would be patients with Huntington disease who've inherited the mutation, but not yet ill. Patients from Alzheimer families, for example, who have ApoE4, homozygous for ApoE4, who might be destined uh, other patients with Parkinson's. You could look throughout and think about patients destined to be ill but not yet ill and think about how neuroprotective therapies may maintain function for longer. Giving the patients extra years to work and maintain normal function, go on walks with their children and grandchildren, have activities at home, not be cared for by others. All of these would be profound, profound improvement in the quality of life in patients with neurodegenerative conditions.